It's time again to come together at the World Equestrian Center and hear what God is speaking through His Word. I'm Chaplain Larry Spielman, and it's a pleasure to welcome you here for another message at the Sanctuary Arena. We've been in this series, uh, Idioms with a Horse, and I have a, an example of an idiom for you this morning to start with, and that is, I, I don't know if you've ever won a class or, or maybe one of your children has won a class by the skin of their teeth. You, you know, you, you just don't think about what all these idioms are. There's lots, lots of them out there that we use on a daily basis, a regular basis. But the skin of your teeth. Now, you know, uh, as far as anatomy goes, we don't have skin on our teeth, right? I mean, I, I, I don't, I mean, you might wake up in the morning and feel like you've got skin on your teeth, but you really don't have skin on your, on your teeth. But this particular idiom was uh, coined by someone in the Bible. And, uh, you know, I was kind of surprised about that when I'm digging into it a little bit. But uh, in the book of Job, uh, Job, you remember, uh, went through all kinds of trials and difficulties and uh, he suffered a lot. And so in Job chapter 19, verse 20, listen to what Job says. I am nothing but skin and bones. He's, he's just really gone through a lot of suffering. I am nothing but skin and bones. I have escaped only by the skin of my teeth. Uh, so this is an old, it's an old idiom. It's been around for a long, long time. And uh, I, I, just, I just think it's interesting how that we use these words uh, lots of times to create an impact uh, of saying something that really, we're not saying that at all. We're just saying something to uh, uh, illustrate how we feel about a situation or something that's going on. So, so if you win or you accomplish something today or you, you escape something today by the skin of your teeth, just know you're not the first person to think that or to say that. Uh, you know, if there's just a fraction of a point between you and the other person, you may, you may go around today telling people, you know what? I just made it by the skin of my teeth. Maybe you don't want to brag about that. I don't know. But uh, anyway, that's, that's where that came from. And so today I have another idiom that I want to really uh, talk to you about and speak from today because we're using these idioms to uh, kind of illustrate and wrap around what the Bible says about certain issues. And this particular idiom says, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. Anybody ever been that hungry? Listen to the horse. <laughs> He's like, no way. <laughs> that was right on cue. <laughs> I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. And so, you know, he, he, the, I don't think anybody, listen, there are some places in the world where eating a horse would be a delicacy. This is not one of them. The World Equestrian Center, I believe the equestrian world uh, would frown on that just a little bit but if, you were, if you were telling people that you eat horses. Uh, so, so this idiot merely isn't talking about uh, eating any, any, any uh, uh, equestrian animal. It's really talking about the fact that I am really, really hungry. I really have this desire to eat. Now, some people, you know, they, they say this because they're uh, looking forward to indulging in a large meal. And now, I'm not here to judge anybody if that's what you, if that's what you do. Uh, I've, I've indulged a few times in some large meals. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not too skinny, you know. I, there's a, there's a, a lot of uh, uh, meals that I've had that were pretty big, you know, in the past. So, uh, this, this idiom is really talking about indulgence. I'm, I'm thinking that I'm going to indulge or I'm going to eat a big meal, not a horse. And so I, I just want to talk to you this morning just a little bit about indulgence and how that temptation many times affects our life and the things that we think and the things that we, that we do. Because really, uh, we're talking about self-indulgence. We're talking about satisfying the desires that we have inside of us. When we're talking about, I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. The hunger many times produces that kind of a, a thought and that kind of a, a desire. So listen, Paul addressed some of this in Galatians chapter 5. And he says, for, I, for you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your, ser your freedom to serve one another in love. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. 
The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us a desire that is opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you're not free to carry on your good intentions. But when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation of the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasure, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarrelings, jealousy. I mean, the list keeps going. Outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envious, drunkenness, wild parties, and sins like these. (laughs) So, you know, Paul just covers the whole gamut when we start self-indulgence. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. So Paul is describing what self-indulgence really entails. This is, this is the kind of thing that when we, when we start believing and start talking about, I want this, my flesh wants this, this is what I want. These are the paths that it will lead us down many times because Paul says in the scripture that the spirit of the Lord doesn't give us these desires. The flesh gives us these desires. Our humanness gives these desires and they're always at war inside of us. Anybody, anybody uh, experience that war from time to time? Believe me, I, I, I do. And, you know, when self-indulgence gets out of control, that's where addictions start to develop. Uh, many times that's just exactly what addictions are, is things that have gotten out of control. Self-indulgences that we start with, and they don't seem that bad at all, but as they progress and they get worse and our desire gets greater, they create addictions in our lives that, that we want to have what we, what we have to have. That's what happens with people with drug and alcohol problems. They, they've just self-indulged to the point that they can't control it anymore. It controls their life. And so Paul here is saying, listen, that's not the, that's not the direction that you want to go. And really, this can happen with any kind of thing that we desire from a natural perspective, a human perspective. It can become an indulgence if we let it run rampant, if we let it get out of control. Um, if you don't think this is true uh, about how indulgences affect you, have you ever tried to fast? You know, this, one of the things that people are doing now to lose weight is intermittent fasting. So like maybe they'll miss two or three meals and then they'll, they'll eat a meal or they'll skip a day and eat a day. I, I, I tell you, every time I fast, especially if I don't do a complete fast, if I just say, well, I'm going to fast this particular thing, that's the thing that I want the most. You know, you all know if you've ever been on a diet, you know how that goes. It, you, it, it's the things, it's all the sweet things. It's all the things that, you know, would wreck your diet. Those are the things that appeal to you. Those are the things that you really want to have. If you say, for instance, hey, I'm going to stay away from chocolate. The whole world turns into a chocolate bar. I mean, you know, that's all you can see. Every single place you look is chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. And, and that's how indulgences uh, get the best of us, is that when we start to give in to them, then we start to have problems with, with the overwhelming desires that uh, really overcome us. And when that starts to happen, usually the struggle is more than we can handle. I've broken fast before just because I could not get my head back into what I was wanting to do. Just to just to go ahead and eat, you know, it wasn't a big deal. I just said I was going to do it. And then when I when I start doing it and then you start struggling, it's hard to pull back from that. And I really I believe that it happens in lots of cases, not just with food, but lots of other situations in our life. You know, when we open the door to a self-indulgent type thing, uh, they're always there pressing and pushing on us to do something. So here's the, here's the advice that I have for you. Stop it before it gets started. Now that sounds like a simple thing to do, doesn't it? <clears throat> Verse 16 said this. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives and then you won't do what your sinful nature craves. Simple. Simple, isn't it? If you want to really avoid being trapped by indulgence, you've got to decide that I'm going to do what God wants me to do. I'm going to follow the principles of his word. I'm going to be faithful to him. And I'm not going to allow these other things to control my life. 
It, it's, it's important that you make that decision. I, I tell young people all the time, don't wait until you're in a situation to decide what's right and wrong. Because seriously, when hormones start raging and things start, uh, you know, getting excited and moving in a certain direction, it, it, that's not the time to start pulling back. That's not the time to start saying, well, I don't know if this is the right thing or the wrong thing to do. I tell them, you know, make a decision, draw a line in the sand, refuse to cross that line until you know that it's the right time or that it's the right thing for you to do according to God's will and God's plan for your life. So if you will make those decisions ahead of time before you ever get into that self-indulgent mode, you will be a lot better off. You'll have a lot better chance of overcoming the temptation that comes to you. It's just not possible many times to, to allow yourself to overcome those kinds of cravings. You see, I think when we start saying things like, I'm so hungry I can eat a horse, we get a lot hungrier, don't we? You think about that. And so, so, you know, you could start saying anything at this point. I'm so lonely, I could. You fill in the dot, dot, dot for yourself. I, I'm, I just want X, Y, Z so bad. And we let those desires, we feed those desires with our thoughts. And we start telling ourselves, hey, you know what? It's okay. It's okay. And maybe, maybe we tell ourselves lots of times, I, it's only going to be this once. It's, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to continue doing these things that I know that are going to be hurtful for me or maybe hurtful for somebody else. And, and so we just, you know, eventually allow ourselves to fall into that self-indulgent mode. So it doesn't make any difference what it is. It's just those things that you want the most, that you talk about the most that will start to control your life. Don't have those arguments. Don't let those things set up an opportunity in your heart and in your mind to, to keep you from doing what God wants you to do. Draw a line in the sand. Say, I'm just, this is where, this is as far as I will go. I won't go any farther. I'm only going to do what God wants me to do. You see, the enemy of our soul knows how to exploit our desires. He only got one, he's only got one mission in life. And the Bible says it's kill, steal, and destroy. So whatever he can do to exploit your self-indulgence tendencies, he's going to do that. He's going to pull you and prod you and do everything that he can. Look, he even did it to Jesus. Jesus had fasted for 40 days. And as soon as, as, soon as he came off of that fast, he was coming out of that fast, the devil came to him and said, Hey, Jesus, won't you, you're so hungry. Why don't you just turn those stones there into some bread? Just get you something to eat. It's, it's been a long time since you had anything to eat. See, the devil was always about proving or, or pushing uh, Jesus to do what he shouldn't do. And so Jesus, Jesus resisted. And, you know, he told the devil, uh, you know, God said we don't live by bread alone. So I don't really need to do that. I fasted 40 days. I can go a couple more days till I get where I need to go. And I make the decision and not you. See, I, I just believe that the devil's always encouraging us to give in to the flesh. Now, maybe you don't believe in the devil, but I'm promising you he's real and he's 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 always active. He's always doing something in our world to tempt to tempt us to get us to do something that's wrong. I really believe that that's one of the reasons that culture, the culture that we live in, tries to and wants to normalize deviant behavior so that when those temptations come, there's not such a big hurdle to cross for us to make it okay. If all of culture says it's okay, then it's a lot easier to give in to those temptations and be self-indulgent. But that's not always the best for us, and that's not always God's plan. I do want you to know that if you're facing temptation, and this is one of the best scriptures that you can put in your, in your little uh, file of ammunition to overcome temptation, is in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it's verse six, or 13. It says, the temptations in your life are no different than what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. God will give you an open door. That's up to us, though, to look for it. The problem is, if we get too deep into the temptation or the desire for self-indulgence, we can't find the door. But God is always making a door and making a way for us to resist those opportunities and to do what he wants us to do. Now, indulgence won't give you what you need. 
I could raise my hand to this and say, how many of, how many of you, don't, don't, don't raise your hand, I don't want to embarrass you this morning. <laughs> how many times have you given in to self-indulgence uh, and the next day regretted it? Uh, more than I can count on my hand for me. And, you know, it, it makes you sad. It makes you feel like, you know, I'm a failure. I, I, didn't, I didn't do what I should do. So self-indulgence really never, ever gives us what we think we want. It never rewards us in the, with the things that we believe that we, that we need. Verse 21 in that passage that I read you says, Let me tell you again, as I have before, anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, anybody who is constantly giving in to self-indulgence and living out all of these sinful behaviors that I, that I listed to you and anything else that's sin in your life, really, any disobedience to God, won't inherit, won't inherit the kingdom of God. So we won't get a reward for being self-indulgent. But we do get a reward if we're faithful to the Lord. In Galatians chapter 6, it says this, So let's not get tired of doing good. At just the right time, we will reap the harvest of a blessing if we don't give up. And I want to encourage you today, make sure that you recognize those temptations for self-indulgence. And decide way ahead of time what you will do and what you won't do so that you can stop it in its tracks. And remember that God will reward us for making good decisions and right decisions and decisions according to his word and his promises if you really want to live the way he wants you to live. Now, the great thing about um, what God has done through Jesus is that he's made a way. When we, when we do those things, we can still ask for forgiveness. And that's, that's a great blessing, you know, because you could just go around feeling guilty all the time and dragging that baggage with you, and it just keeps piling up and piling up. But God said, you know, if you'll confess your sins, in other words, if you'll confess your self-indulgences and turn away from those things, I'll forgive you and I'll make you new. And I, I just believe that that's, that's the God that we serve. He's, he's a gracious God. And I don't want to treat his grace cheaply. I don't want to just do whatever I want to do and just keep saying, oh, sorry. You know, you've known people like that in your life that they do something wrong to you. and They're like, sorry, but it's not really sorry. But God wants us to really, when we come to him and ask for forgiveness, to be sorry and turn away from doing those things any longer. So I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. But you know what? I'm not going to. I want to be faithful to the Lord and I want to do what he wants me to do. So this morning, I want to pray for you and I want to, I want to ask God to give you strength to overcome those moments that you are stressed and you, that you feel like I just have to do something. I want you to know God will come and give you strength to overcome those things. So let's pray together, okay? God, I pray this morning. I'm so thankful for your power. Your word tells us if we'll follow the guidance of your Holy Spirit, you'll steer us away from those things that are self-indulgent and harmful for us. And Lord, we could all probably point back to things in our life that we've, we've made a choice and satisfied the flesh and our human desires rather than doing what you would have us to do. And so God, today, we, we're just asking that you would forgive us. Forgive us for those times when we've sinned against you and done the wrong thing. Help us today, God, to honor and glorify your name. Help us to truly change the way that we behave. Help us, God, to look for opportunities, those open doors that you create for us in every situation where we're tempted and we're pushed to do the wrong thing. God, I pray today that you'll bless these folks, that you'll give them a wonderful day, and that you'll help them any time that temptation comes their way to turn away from that and to turn to you. Lord, I pray today for our equestrian family. I ask that you would be with our riders, our exhibitors, and all of these folks as they get ready to go back home. Lord, watch over them and protect them and keep them in your care. Thank you today, God, for your love and grace. In Jesus' name, amen.